My name is Dominic Palazzolo and I'm the owner of MakeYourOwnMolds.com. I want to let you know that you're starting to watch what I call the long version of my class on how to make sugar glassware like the wine glass I have here. By long version, what I mean is that this is a collection of videos that can last or run longer than an hour. In this long version, you are going to receive everything that I know and all the tips and tricks that I can impart into this film and deliver to you on how to make this type of glassware and how to make the mold properly. Now, for those of you who do not have the time to basically sit here for an hour and watch a film like this, I want you to know that we've made a short version where we've put together a very concise delivery of the method on how to make sugar glassware. Those of you who would like to go there, what you can do is click right into this space right here and you'll be transported immediately to the short version of this lesson. Now, for those of you who want to watch the long version, that's great. Just stay right there and we're going to start. But before we start, I wanted to let you know that in addition to making glassware like this wine glass, we also have kits available that enable you to make beer glasses, uh, fluted champagne glasses, and martini glasses. And that is available at MakeYourOwnMolds.com. Now, as you can see, you are going to learn how to make a piece of sugar glass that can actually hold wine or vodka or champagne. You can drink from this glass and you can also eat this glass if you want to. And I will demonstrate for you. So you can actually drink. And if you or your customers or guests or friends want to eat the glass, that can be done quite easily. And as you can see, there's a lot of fun and potential involved in being able to make things like this. So I invite you to sit back and enjoy this class that some people have paid $600 for and we offer it to you free. So what, now what we're going to do is, this is the glass we're going to make a mold of, and it's, it's our wine glass. And so there's certain things that we've got to do in order to prep this glass before we attempt to make a mold of it. One of the first things that I want you to think about is, let's turn this glass over, and when we look at it, notice that it's hollow. We've got a lot of air in there. This is basically, right now, as far as a mold maker is concerned, a glass balloon. If we ever poured any type of a liquid like silicone or water, imagine how uh, strong the force would be for this to rise out of your silicone. And so what we have to do is we have to take away the buoyancy of this wine glass. Basically, we have to make this glass solid. And we have to fill it with something that is heavier than water. Now I'm going to show you what we fill that gl wine glass with first. But I mean, I'm going to show you what we fill that wine glass with. But first, what I want to do is I want to show you how we're going to seal across the top. Now this is just safety clay. Safety clay is a non-toxic clay. <clears throat> and it's also, it, it doesn't dry. And I use safety clay a lot for so many of my mold making projects. You can use it over and over again. And it is available on my website at makeyourownmolds.com. But what we're going to do is we're going to cut kind of like a lid or manhole cover for this glass. Now, I just invert the wine glass onto the sheeted safety clay. And I would say that this safety clay is about a quarter of an inch. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take basically a needle tool. Now, this can be an X-Acto knife. It can be a paring knife. But I like to use a needle tool because the tool goes through the clay 
in any direction that I want it to, and it cuts very cleanly. So I'm just going to keep the glass in place, and I'm going to press the tool, and I'm going to use the glass as a template. And I'm just going to cut through the clay and around the outside lip of the glass. You've probably noticed that I'm working on a flexible chopping mat. This is just a rectangular piece of plastic. It's supposed to be a substitute cutting board. I like to work on these because I can move my project. And it's just plastic. It works great with silicone. So it's a nice thing to have on hand when you're doing this project. Now, let me say something right now. <clears throat> If you're going to move this project to a shelf or out of the way when you're done pouring your silicone, you don't want to have something that is flexible. This project's going to remain here and cure and stay in its, its place. If you are going to move your project, then you want something that does not flex. You want something that is rigid, that could be uh, a metal sheet pan, it could be a piece of acrylic or plexiglass. But for our purposes right now, I'm working with the flexible chopping mat. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take away the excess, and you can see that we have just a nice little disc that fits around the top of the glass. Now. I'm going to wipe this clay off. OK, now, what are we going to fill this glass with in order to take away its buoyancy or its readiness to float in a liquid? And I was just trying to think about that when I was thinking of you know, showing you this tutorial. And I thought, well, let's see, based on my clients, what do we have around that's inexpensive, it's heavier than water? And what I like to use is granulated sugar. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to fill my wine glass about three quarters of the way with granulated sugar. Now dry granulated sugar is heavier than water, so it's going to perform its function of keeping this glass down when we're pouring our silicone over it. OK, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this disc that I made, and I'm just going to kind of work it into the glass. And it makes a nice top. Now, I'm just going to cut some strips, again with my needle tool. And I am going to simply take these strips of safety clay and I'm going to work it around the perimeter. Now, the top of this wine glass is actually a lower circumference or diameter than the belly of the glass. So that's why we have to take the safety clay strips and put it around the side. Now what I'm doing is I am pinching the safety clay into the side of the glass. I want to tell you that using safety clay in order to keep things, in order to seal things, in order to contain things like in my sugar bottle mold, there's a lot of people who don't understand. They think it's a miracle substance. but if you notice what I'm doing, and I'd really like you to get a good close-up of this, I am pressing this clay and actually smearing it against the glass. I'm using a good pressure. And when I do this, what is going to happen is, is that this clay is going to be well seated against this glass. You're not going to be able to get anything out of there now. We're going to continue to add clay inside this glass. 
and you know the safety clay works very nice this isn't a scientific process you're basically just filling the voids you'd like to have as little air as possible and I am just using my scraps and placing them in there again pushing the clay hard very hard against the edge now when I take my cardboard two bit and I put it over this glass I am again going to show you how to apply this clay so that you don't have any spills so you don't have any of the copy flex escape and pour out all over your work surface so I'm just going to be applying the safety clay until I have the wine glass completely filled now I would like I like to actually overfill this wine glass and I'm going to show you why in just a second again do you see how I am sealing the clay against the edge going to add just a little more clay just to make sure that I have more clay and I have overfilled the glass all right now what I'm going to do is, as you can see, the blade of my paring knife is longer than the diameter of the top of the glass. And I'm just going to kind of go very slowly, and I'm going to keep my blade straight and use the top of the wine glass as a guide. And I'm just going to make some cuts in order to try to make the clay as flush with the top of the wine glass as I can. Okay? All right. I'm just going to smooth this out. Now, when we turn this glass over, first of all, it's a lot heavier it's going to stay put I'm going to show you how to anchor that down but as you can see I can't get this sugar to come out to the safety clay if applied properly can be a very very effective plug for almost anything as you can see we've transformed the wine glass now to look just like this fluted champagne glass so now our prep for mold making is done and I'm going to now show you the next step in our next segment of how uh, of, of what the very first step in making a mold of this glass will be now the first thing that we want to do is we're going to have to think about the shape of this wine glass. You see, we're going to mount the wine glass like this, upside down. And we're going to put this tube over it, just like that. And then we're going to pour the Copy Flex liquid silicone. Now what I found happens is that the air that's incorporated into the silicone is going to be rising during the five hour curing process and that air is going to be trapped underneath the foot of this wine glass which is now the top you would think that that air would just kind of roll off to the sides and continue on its way up but actually that doesn't happen the air actually stays here and it can ruin the look of your sugar or chocolate glass because when your glass comes out of the mold You'll have all of these bumps where the air accumulated and the silicone will actually form and look almost like a rubber foam there. So what we want to do is we want to avoid that 
And so the first thing that we're going to do is I'm going to wash the stem and the foot of this glass. Now I'm washing it because I'm going to put some silicone here. I'm actually going to put silicone plastique. The thing that you've got to remember whenever you're making a mold of glassware and bottles and things like this is that your fingerprints are going to be all over this glass as you're working with it, especially when we were working with the safety clay. That's an oil-based clay and it leaves kind of a slick on your skin. And you will actually put fingerprints onto the surface of this glass that you may not even be able to see, but I guarantee you that the CopyFlex will copy your fingerprint. And your fingerprint will come out on your sugar wine, uh, wine glass or a bottle or even your chocolate. So what I did now is I just washed it with tissue dipped in just a little dishwashing liquid and water and that usually does a good job. Now I'm going to take silicone plastic. This is a two-part silicone mold making material and you combine both parts in equal amounts. It's called a one-to-one -one mix ratio. Now the only reason why there are two different colors is so that you can tell when the two parts have been thoroughly mixed. If you look at it right now you can see that we have a lot of white and blue streaking and obviously you have to mix it more. Now a lot of you will think, oh this is easy, common sense, blah blah blah, and a lot of you will not mix it enough. Because, you know, you just give it a quick glance and right, you know, it'll, it'll look a uniform blue and everything seems fine. But what I like to do is I like to flatten it out and I really like to take a look at it. I want to make sure that I have no streaking and as you can see, We've got a nice solid color there and now the product is ready to be used. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take about half of this and it's very easy to work with. It works like Play-Doh or clay. You see I can make it into almost any shape that I want and I'm just going to make a string and I'm going to put it on the outside perimeter of the foot of this glass. Now I'm going to turn the glass over because I can see through the bottom and I want to make sure that I didn't trap any air in the bottom of the silicone as I put it on the glass. And then what you would do is just push it towards the stem. It's easier to do it upright like this. Now. I don't want to have the silicone plastique actually creeping over the edge of the bottom of the glass. I want to keep it on top of that foot. And then I'm going to take some more. First of all, you want to make sure that you push it all the way up to the stem, just like that. And then I'm going to take some more and I'm going to put it just not really on the stem and not where I stopped. I don't know if you can see that, but it's kind of like a donut and it's kind of behind the leading edge of the silicone plastique. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to form a cone and I'm going to bring the silicone plastique up the stem very slowly and try to make it tight so I don't trap any air. We want a nice smooth stem and foot coming out of here and so trapping air is just going to be a bump in your finished glass. It's not the end of the world if it happens but ultimately what we want to do and as, as you can see we want to make 
just kind of like a cone shape. Now, imagine when we're pouring our copy flex in our mold, now what happens is, is that the copy flex is rising and we've got all this air and instead of getting trapped underneath the foot, the air hits the silicone plastique and it's going to then be redirected to the sides and to the top where it can come out of the liquid and that's exactly what we want and we're going to get a really nice mold that way. Remember that glass is clear and you can always double check to see if you've trapped any air by looking through the bottom of the glass and if you want, if you've done a poor job, you can take it off and do it again. So what I'd like to say right now is silicone plastic is unique in that respect. Many of the materials that have a consistency like this cure in five or ten minutes. That means you have about 30 seconds of work time. That simply goes against my philosophy. I think that if you're going to make a really good mold, you need time to work it in and shape it the way you want it and so get rid of any trapped air and silicone plastique cures in an hour to an hour and a half at 70 degrees and that gives you about 15 minutes of work time and 15 minutes is a really great time I could continue to work with this even now under these hot lights and it gives you a great advantage for making an excellent mold <laughs>